Hey everybody, welcome back. You know, the last couple of videos, I've just basically been hammering out there just telling you exactly what the Lord has been speaking. And, um, you know, I can't stress it enough about that prayer time and spending that time with the Father and spending that time with Jesus in a separate time. But also give time to sit there and be still and not, um, not, uh, be focused on whatever you're doing. Get all your distractions out in the morning. If you drink coffee in the morning, get you a cup of coffee in you. you let the dog out, whatever you got to do, feed the fish, whatever. But get those distractions out of your life, people. Get those, that timing of things out of your life. And spend that quality time with Him. Make sure you're doing daily Christ-like features. Help Him. Ask Him to help you be more like Him. Pray for that. Problem is, we're so judgmental. We're so ready to pass judgments on people when we really don't even know the truth about it until you actually seek and find out the truth. You know, the devil's using every every part of his capabilities because we give it to him to basically control us. He uses love. What did God do? God sent Jesus out of love to give us everlasting life. So naturally, the copier is going to copy what God does. Well, if you call yourself a Christian follower, an example, then it's time we start acting like it. Are they going to pierce, per persecute us? Dang right they're going to. They're already doing it. And we're allowing it. We're allowing all this other nonsense in the world to take over. Identifying pronouns. Now this triangle crap, alien stuff. I mean, people, when is it enough? But yet... Like I said on that one video, Morgan Freeman, he spoke it the most. I don't need a Black History Month. I don't want it. We don't need no Asian Month. We don't need no Mexican Month. We don't need no White Month. We don't need no Black Month. We don't need any of it. It's separating us when we do this. You hold on to a past that you really don't know much about. Yes, it's horrible. What the Jews went through. It was horrible. Look what the Egyptians did to him. Yes, I'm not saying any of it's right. I'm not saying it was wrong for women not to be able to vote, women not to have a rights. Well, we got the we got the women's rights going on. We got the uh, people to where they don't have to sit in the back of the bus. We had a, a 16th president to seem to it. But yet we still have skin wars. But yet we want to look at the whole concept of what's going on, but we're missing what the important part of it is. The important part of it is that we don't join together until a tragedy comes. 9-11. I'm not even going down that avenue. You know, uh, I've been trying to upload videos on another site. Some of them go, some of them don't. Uh, I don't know if it's the length. I, I'm really not for sure too much but I like it because I can freely speak what the common world already knows and like I said before I'm not so sure that China owns YouTube people I, people have been sending me emails saying Nelson yeah they do I, 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 I disagree I disagree here's why I disagree because if I was China and I had someone and I'm watching someone and I'm uploading these videos and they're speaking the things they're speaking, I wouldn't stop it because it's basically talking about how stupid the United States is. Dumb. War is war. I understand we got allies. I understand that we need to protect people. Sometimes the United States puts our nose in business we shouldn't be in. That's just my thoughts on it. It's because it has to in line with their plans. Sometimes fake wars break out so we can act like we're in war 
so we could spend money, well, show that we're spending money on things that's necessarily not there. And that's what the devil does. The devil comes after your children because you're too busy doing other things. You want a doctor with a degree that's going to fix it. The only doctor I know can fix it is Jesus Christ. Look at Peter and all that. They were fishermen. But yet Peter's shadow healed because they had belief. You're losing your children because you don't have belief in what God says. I don't know what else to tell you. Believe me or don't believe me. I've seen the things that still I can't even speak about. I try. I try to warn you people and tell people exactly what I say, but I can't even get the words to come out of my mouth sometimes. And then when I do start speaking about it, I can tell when people don't want to hear about something. But it's amazing. It's amazing. How do you not want to hear about what the demonic realm's doing? How? Then what is the sense in having a spiritual warfare? If you go to a class and you sit there, but then when the demon comes a knocking, you go a running because you don't want to hear about it. Because most of these people that are teaching these classes are, are so terrified themselves. We ran into a good example of that when we went to Akron Springfield Church. What a crock. The person holding the class couldn't wait to get away from us. Churches are sleeping. Fast asleep. And the devil's playing the soothing pipe piper music to put them to sleep. When they wake up, it's going to be too late. Are you going to be coming along the journey or are you going to be stuck in this realm because so many people worship and idolize so many people try to trick you they become your friends because there's a benefit to it I want to do this I want to do that I never had the things in life or somebody give me something well get out and earn it how much nonsense do you have in your life how much money do you spend on activities like alcohol or drugs or uh, ridiculousness think about it think about it you start taking out all that money that you're spending on alcohol and everything else and putting it into an account and don't touch it, you can have yourself a new truck. You can have yourself a new car. You can have yourself a down payment on a home if that's what you want. You notice when they set these construction sites up, man, sometimes you just want to sit there and go, what in the world? I guess that's what calls us the professionals. <laughs> but you know, I'm going back after the devil. Not the things that I spent on alcohol and those type of things. You know, I'm going back after the inheritance that he stole from us. I'm going back after and praying for those children. Not that their eyes are open. Yes, I want that. And I want spiritual hearing so they can hear and see exactly what the devil's doing. But I'm going to pray that worse comes into their lives until they finally fall into this rut that they can't figure out how to get out of. And I don't even think then they would call on Jesus. I, I really don't. I know a lot of family members that are so stuck on, on I, I'm good or... I'm going to repent at the end or uh, because I believe. Well, believing is not enough. Get this craziness out of your head. If you sit there and do the worldly ways, if you sit there and have demonic stuff in your house, you 
sit there and do the things you do and don't put God first in anything in your life. Well, let me tell you right now, when I became a follower, one by one by one by one, I mean, it was like a dust storm coming at me that they were running so fast. I used to know this song. Uh, it was called, uh, uh, do the, do, some of the lyrics was, all the random hands that was re reaching out to shake my hand is reaching for the door. You know, I thought about that song when I first listened to it, when I first heard it years back, and I thought about my life, you know, I've been thinking a lot about closure, and God has been closing a lot of doors, and God has opened many doors, you know, I spoke before about going down a hallway, and there was many doors, and when I, when I finish whatever's in there, sometimes I can open a door, and I go in it, and there's a lot of doors, and I gotta go through every door. And when them doors are closed, it becomes a solid piece of wall. When I walk out of the final door and shut it, it becomes a solid piece of wall. And that's how life is. But what we got to understand, it's time to examine ourselves and allow God and Jesus to close these doors and to seal it off. When they take something out of your life, don't, don't go searching for it. Because your flesh wants it. Trust me. You don't want it. You know, everybody has their opinions of what they believe <coughs> and they're entitled to it. Really, to be honest with you, I have no more patience or place for any of it. I have no more patience or place for anybody, they're just telling me something because they think that it works. It, is, it hasn't. My children think that they can pull the wool over my eyes because they think it works. And they usually come against their mother or bring their mother into it to think I'm going to do something. No, that's never worked because I've, I've never taught them to use one side to the other. They, they develop this thinking it works. Maybe it works on the mother's side, I don't know. But it doesn't on mine. Because I look at all the crap that I've sacrificed over the years. Well, yeah, if she's doing something for him, it's about time. And I don't care her thoughts or whatever. They've seen it. But they're going to believe what they want to believe too. It's weird how they, the parent that does the least is the ones they seem to flock to. Because they want that acceptance. My youngest daughter was, was the same way. Turn, she's almost identical to her mom. To her actions and the way that she acts. Things that she does. and the, the way that she talks. Because she wants that acceptance. She wants a motherly love. That's really. A, that she's not, never really been a mother. She's been more of a friend. And no I'm not coming against her. Because I can pray for her today people. I have peace with her. I really do. You know why? Because I don't have to put up with the nonsense no more. One day, God's going to send, if I'm, we're still here, God tarries. I'm hoping one day he sends something. Because it, it is, it is nice to have grandkids around. It is nice to have that interaction. But then I'm telling you right now, some days when I just sit there, I think it's been so long. I honestly, I think the devil has robbed stuff for so long. And, you know, when I was talking about that video past that, uh, the chains, you know, I, I carried some heavy chains and I finally asked the Lord, I said, man, these chains are weighing me down, bringing me down. He goes, well, why do you still have them? There's no need for them. If I, if I seemed wrong, I would bring it to you. Because people misunderstand something and they take it and run with it. And another one was so angered at me and disgusted, she went to the evil source itself 
that can't stand me, and the two form together, and then your own family joins in with you. Awesome. I don't need that in my life no more. I'm hoping, and I still ask you guys to pray for Darlene to be able to see her granddaughter. And um, yeah, God opens that door if it's in God's will. So pray for that. If it's in God's will, that she'll be able to see her granddaughter. Even maybe make amends with her daughter. I don't know. Whatever God has in store, I forgive, but I don't want no part of it. I come to this conclusion two nights ago. I, I can't be around it no more. Because first of all, that granddaughter is no longer the person that she was. But I believe my wife can get her back onto that, that uh, place in life, you know. There's a lot of devils out there, people. They're coming in many different sizes, many different ways, and they're coming to distract us. They are coming to lead us down a pathway straight to hell. And let me tell you what, I fell into it a few times. And then after I start listening to the repeat, the repeat, the repeat, that's how you know a demon. Because they'll repeat something and forget that they even said it. You think it sounds silly, but I was I was talking to someone that I, I kept listening to what they kept telling me. And I thought it was kind of odd that their vehicle... The same thing happened to it again. Well, you just had a starter fixed on it. How the heck is the starter out again? And they repeated the same thing. You will not believe where this is at. Or you will not believe where the battery is. You will not believe. I'm going, well, wait a minute. You just told me this a few months ago. See, my memory's going on a lot of things, but a lot of things still stay in them filing cabinets, in them files, until, because it doesn't make any sense. I had another guy send me a picture of his odometer, just randomly. Odometer. He just sent me a picture of his odometer, and still won't explain to me. Origin, all he said was original miles. Okay, well, hell, I got about 180,000 on my trailblazer. What, what is the purpose? I, I mean, it doesn't make sense. You see what the devil does? Distractions, distractions, and more distractions. It's time to get the distractions out of our lives. I look at it this way. Anything that's out of my life, I had, you know, the, the morning of the death, I guess, is over. <laughs> I guess that's a better way to put it. It's like someone says, you don't know what it's like to mourn a death of your child. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. You have no idea what it's like for your child to take you to court and almost be arrested for the things that I was falsely accused of. Hell, I've been falsely accused by my children for years. You have no idea what it's like. Don't I? Oh, I know what it's like to mourn a child. I've been mourning for the last years, and now I finally woke up and said, okay, enough. Time to walk away from the dirt. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Wherever they end up, they're going to end up. There's nothing I can do. I know I did the right thing as a parent. I know I was a parent first. I know they may disagree with some of the things, but I can't help it. Stupid is stupid. I remember a time when my son was leaving. You're not my dad. I don't live here no more. This ain't my house. And he went and sat under a tree in the rain. I brought him trash back. And he still he told me he was upset by it. You didn't even try to do it. Are you kidding me? What do you want me to do? Beg you to come back in the house? Give me a break. Think about how goofy this is. One day, their children are going to grow. And hopefully, they will never have to go through ridiculousness.
then he was upset by a truck. Okay, well, if you were paying on the vehicle, which he does, his wife's vehicle, he doesn't make a payment, what happens? They'll probably call you. You miss the second payment, they got a repo truck coming to get you. But it wasn't so much the fact of the payment on the truck, it was the fact he wasn't listening, wasn't coming home. He was disobeying. And there's no consequence for it. But they seem to forget this stuff. You see what the devil does? And it's not just my son. It's been a, the whole line of it. My ex-wife's oldest son stole freaking money out of my wallet and I went to go get gas later on that day and I had no money. I, we, I didn't have bank cards back then. I didn't have, you know, you didn't have swipe your card and all that. You had to use cash. You know, that paper stuff that's worthless. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I had no lunch, no nothing, and he took every bit of my money. Stole speakers, stereo out of my truck. I mean, I can go down the list of things. But they see the bad and the wrong what I did. Screaming, yelling all the time, throwing stuff. I mean, you go through this and you go, where, where do you not find the fault in what you've done? What about looking at yourself? People, this is what I'm talking about when we when we are supposed to be examining ourselves. When you start examining yourselves, it's like taking a test. How do you see yourself? Well, you want to give all tens. Most likely, none of us can give all tens. Think about that. This is crazy, isn't it? Now, you sit there and we think about what God expects. God expects us to be like Jesus. We are to love. He said, turn the other cheek. Forgive. Pray for those who come against you. Do right to those. Well, I've done right to those. And I've done it over and over and over. Sometimes Darlene doesn't understand some of this stuff. I, I can't believe because she, she couldn't believe what I was telling her until she seen it firsthand. Everything I told her, I said, I know, watch this. A month to two weeks, two weeks useless. Then they got a little bit clever and they started the month. And I said, it's either they're going to go two weeks or they're going to start at the beginning of the month prior to their birthday and they'll start reaching out to me. When it gets closer to the two week mark, then I hear from them dang there every day or every other day. But you see how the devil tries to get under there to try to get a reaction on it. Tough love and hard love sometimes to give back to, to, to your children is, is difficult. Difficult to discipline. You think God likes disciplining us? We don't, God, most of the time God doesn't because our own guilt holds us. When you enter into the realm of hell... God isn't going to have to judge you. He's not going to have to punish you. Because what's going to happen to you there is going to be your eternal punishment. What you, when you're looking at heaven, when you're being tortured, weeping and gnashing of your teeth and grinding them down to powder, I don't know. Good luck with that one. I guess you're not going to sit there and go, well... Dang, man, where's my uh, Lamborghini? I want my cappuccino. Where's my coach purse? And some of you are buying these ridiculous things so you can look important in the world and you're struggling to know how the heck you're going to pay for half this stuff. Do I charge stuff? Yes. Paid off? Yes. Is some of the stuff ridiculous? Maybe to some. 
But, you know, no disrespect, but I really don't care what your opinion is on it. I mean, think about it. I don't walk into someone's house and judge them. I tell them about demonic things. When you see it, then you wonder why your life's upside down. I still think about that lady that sent that that comment about that little boy going out there and digging through there to, to, to get rid of that Harry Potter wand and stuff. Awesome. I hope I hope the devil never distracts that kid because I got a feeling God's going to use him in very interesting ways. I kind of wish that lady would reach back out and just give me an update on how he's doing a couple years later. What an awesome story, man. I mean, that is the kind of stuff that we don't hear. Because we don't do testimonies. We don't do our life because I'm not going to be the one that's going to go out there. Oh, no. I'm not going to shop at, at this store over here in my neighborhood. I'm going to go to somebody else's neighborhood. I had a sister tell me that. She drove out of her way to go to a discount store in a different neighborhood. So nobody seen her shopping in it. And I finally told her one day, I think I've told you guys this before. I finally told her, if you're in there shopping and you run across somebody in there shopping, what are they going to think about you because they're in there shopping too? She just looked at it. All you think you're doing is wasting a bunch of gas. <laughs> because you're prideful. Because success was living in places where my grandmother lived. I have a house in this neighborhood. I'm successful. Well, if that's what you find comforting, you got a bigger problem. I can line up a hundred cars and put them in a hundred car garage and have the biggest tennis court, the biggest swimming pools, and have the luxury of luxury, a home theater, and all this nonsense inside of a house. But what am I going to do with it? lived in Florida and we just call it the vacation when we got home. Most of the time I was so exhausted, so beat down, couldn't do the things that I really wanted to do. I wanted to spend time at the beach more. That's one thing I miss. I miss just going there and walking the beach and just sitting on just look out there, all that water, and try to figure out how low tide the water would disappear and high tide the water would come back and go so far and stop. It's God's control. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care what people come up with their ways of thinking and how, why it does what it does and the water does this and the temperature is... Are you <laughs> If that's what you believe, then believe it. I don't... I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. But it could be perfectly true. I mean, that could be exactly what happens. I don't know. But think about that much body of water. How deep that ocean is. We're talking thousands and thousands of gallons of water. I mean, look how deep it is. It's amazing. Kind of like all these sea creatures and stuff that they're finding now underwater in taverns and all this stuff that's unidentified. Well, yeah. Because you got, you got people playing God and making animals and then dumping them out there in the water. What do you think is going to happen? 
you got AI and all these nonsense that's going on. People. I've said it years ago. You have no idea what's walking among us. I mean, the crazy thing about it is AI... Could, could they become like iRobot and train themselves to take over? Maybe. Not, it's not impossible. I watched a video of a guy interacting, putting these AI robots out there, and uh, nobody knew. I mean, these things were so realistic, people. I mean, I was like, wow. I had no clue. I mean, it looked like a human. I mean, literally, I, the way they walked, the way they talked, there was none of that pausing it and all that in there. And they just, like a person. And when they lined it up and people had to pick which ones were robots and which ones were real people, be surprised how many people got it wrong. I, I actually picked a few that I thought were AIs and the ones that I thought weren't. I was wrong. And there was ten of them. You had to pick the five out of the ten that was not real humans. And I picked three of them. So I got three wrong. That's how realistic it was. And I know some of you might have seen the video with that one girl talking and she's got a blue like dot flashing on the side, but they covered all that stuff up. You couldn't see. I would imagine that's probably where the communication comes from is in that dot thing that lights up. I could be wrong. I don't know a lot about AI or nor do I really even care. Because why should we? Think about it. We don't even care enough to stand up and stop the nonsense that's going on. We don't care enough to join together and go up to Congress and stand out there, but the gay rights do. I always said, you want to pass something? You want something to pass? You go up there right about September, August, September, and you start standing out there in front of that Capitol building, and you start yelling what's you want the past. By God, they're they're going to they're going to really look into things and taking th into consideration because they know the elections, especially this time of year when it's getting ready to get up here for the House, the Senate, and all that whatever else nonsense. See, I like history, I like science, but one thing I can tell you, I never really paid a lot of attention to the politicians and that kind of stuff because to me. Even as a young boy growing up, it was nonsense. It's nonsense. Because they don't do nothing. In my book, I, I, they're more worried about how they can line their pockets than make anything great again. How can the laws work for them? Well, it, don't you think if these laws are put in place... We should be able to have it. No, instead, every year we got to pay all this extra money on this or that. And I know I get it mixed up, so I'm not even saying it because it almost causes an argument sometimes. It's like, okay, whatever it is, it's still a money we got to pay that we shouldn't have to pay. It, it, it's almost like owning a home is ridiculous anymore. But then you look at the apartment complexes, you look at all these places you got to live, and it's like, honestly, it's the only thing that keeps me going, oh, let's just pay it. <laughs> because I don't ever want to go back to that kind of freaking life. It's not a life. you got to sit there and worry about, you know, you got to worry about the neighbors. Well, I, I still got to do that because it's weird, period. <laughs> but I don't pay attention to it try not to. Sometimes you, you have a hard time. 
you know, it, I really have a hard time because I only got a little bit of time and I'm trying to do a lot of stuff around my yard. I, and then somebody comes out. I'm not trying to be unfriendly, but can't you come out when I'm just like sitting outside and come over and talk? No, everybody, why does people wait till you're in a distract to doing what you're trying to do? Knowingly, what I do for a living, it's distractions, frustration. That's what the devil wants to do. See, sometimes even being a Christian, the devil uses you and you don't even know that he's doing it. Just like God can use a sinner to get your attention. Even sometimes they'll speak something and you just sit there and look at it like, huh. Think about it. You sit there and go through life wondering why things happen. Sometimes you gotta stop looking and look in the mirror. We are in a bad time, people. I mean, bad. Things are about to unfold, and when this stuff breaks loose, look out. I'm being serious. You know, I, somebody asked me a while back what I thought about gun control, and I said, what about it? They're never going to stop it. I don't know why people put so much thought into it. It's like drugs. You figure they, they legalize marijuana, but yet they still got all these things. You can't do this, can't do that, can't do Are you kidding me? Then why don't you even put it in the place? Because you know they're going to, you can carry this much on you, they can do this, you can smoke it. All you did is open Pandora's box and so you can make money on it. But the crazy thing is, years ago, I spoke that marijuana would become legal. I said, well, what are these drug dealers going to do when marijuana becomes legal? It won't be long before all the nonsense pills and uh, all this other stuff that they take will become legal. Because it's a profit, profit, profit. And they can thin out the herd. Look at Social Security. I still hear people. I was just at a DC and they were talking about Social Security. They can't wait to retire. This is how much Social Security. And I'm sitting there thinking in my head going, do you really think that Social Security is going to be around? I don't. I think it's crazy that we ain't even got to pay into it. I really do. Even if you do get it, is it going to be enough for you to be able to survive in this world? No. Look how many people go back to work in a temporary job. They work just enough hours so they don't get penalized. Because otherwise, basically what you're doing is, and see, Social Security doesn't care about this. Because you're basically, they're thinking, what a goof. They're basically going to pay themselves the money right back. So it's a win-win for them. Somebody asked me, you plan on retiring, Nelson? What age? I don't. When I retire, I hope, I hope the Lord takes me out of here. What's that mean? It means... Sometimes doing the right things, you gotta accept God's going to keep you moving. And I wonder how many people are gonna sit there and think about that one and actually understand what I'm saying. If you do, comment below. Comment on it. Every time I tell, you know what's interesting that I notice when I tell people to comment? people do comment, they comment on everything but what I'm asking them to comment on. It's amazing. 
but I do see a, a lot more likes now, which I appreciate that because it gets these videos out there, people, and that's what it's about. I think sometimes people need a rambling person like me to open up ears. No, I'm not trying to get famous off. If I was trying to get famous off, then I sure wouldn't be doing YouTube. <laughs> and I sure wouldn't put up with all the goofiness. I'd turn the comment off. But I like interacting with people. That Because I, I never liked that before, but I, I do. I like interacting, knowing what someone's going through. Because many times I pray on it. Do you think it's... A coincidence that God led you into this, whether you think God did or not. Some of you may not follow God. Some of you might be so far in the devil's trap, but you think that somewhere down there, God had to push that door for you to watch these videos. But that's not where I'm going with that. Where I'm going with that, do you think it's a coincidence that God has let me live the life I have lived? I have lived most people's concerns and I always say one day I hope I someone comes up to me and says this what's your thoughts I have no idea never never been through that but let me tell you something let me pray on it. let's pray together on it and we'll come back together in, in two weeks and if we still don't hear from God we'll pray we'll keep praying until he does. But it's a consistent prayer we must do. I was talking about the... I was just sitting here thinking about a couple of the emails. I got a nasty one. I mean, nasty. Some of them are pretty nasty, but this one was just, like, ridiculous. And, because I was sitting there talking about these uh, Star Wars toys. And how I arranged it down in, down in the basement. Basically, it's kind of like the laundry room. But it had this bench and stuff in there. And I did it kind of like from how Star Wars to the Empire Strikes Back to um, Return of the Jedi. Kind of spaced everything apart. Now, granted stuff, the stuff I bought wasn't complete. There was a lot of missing either cables off of one of the, the um, ships or walkers or what, you know, the ad hats and stuff like that. Uh, the one doesn't stand up very well. But it's the fact when even in the condition trying to buy everything separate would have been a, a heck of a lot more than what I paid. I shouldn't say I. Well, Darlene and I paid. Um, and, and I'm trying to even correct that because I know people get, well, well you, you act like your wife don't do it. I, I, said, I, I never said that. I'm talking about myself. You know, even sometimes, you know, I hear what she says and I'm trying to be thoughtful about that, but I'm, I tried to explain to her, I understand that you, with, with you, but I'm talking more about myself right now. But if it bothers and it upsets, then we should try to refocus what we're doing or what we're talking about. But it's the fact that, you know, When things become an idol or an obsession, you look at it and go, you know, there's more things that I could be doing in life. But here's the kick to it. person asked me, and it's the same person, I'm, I mean, I'm like, like I said in the other video, this person has to know me, I mean, seriously has to know me, because the things they're saying is, 
is stuff that only someone that really knows me or knows about me would possibly do. But it's okay. I don't care who it is. But they asked me, is it an idol? No. Would you sell it today? I sure would. Would you buy something else? Probably. Would it be that stuff? No. Because that's the stuff that the devil took. And I believe God's restoring this stuff. Whether or not I had it tomorrow, I wouldn't really care. It's just the fact that I finally got it all up there. And I got to see it in my, at my head and what I had visioned in my head. And a couple things, even Darlene moved around and says, I, I think it'll look better like this. And I sat there on the bench. Well, I had, the, you know, my weight benches and stuff down there. And I sat there. And I thought my head going, nobody else that I know, no other person I've ever been with, would have ever came and sat with me and helped me arrange anything. My own children. Heck, my own children wouldn't even help me move stuff. Unless there was something in it for them. I remember at the time we moved back from Florida, we put everything in storage, and you know, it was like, I, you know what, I'm not even going there because that's just bad. It's just bad. <laughs> it's, uh, that's something that I'm still trying to uh, ask the Lord to take from me. Because it's bitterness. I mean, people, it, it really is bitterness. It just irks my blood. I mean, it really, it, 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 it not irks it, it just boils it, I guess. I mean, it's, it's bad. <laughs> the thoughts that I have, and, and, and I still, you know what, I'm just going to repent. Heavenly Father, in your Son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask that you forgive me for these thoughts, even just now, the thoughts that came to my head. And just remove this from me, and take it from me. And, you know, you Lord, you've always said, just represent me and show me. And don't be afraid to, to do the right things, even though the world's going to come against me. Even right now, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not just doing this because this video is playing or recording. I'm doing it because I believe it. And I believe this is the right way to be. And I would stand in the middle of an open factory with thousands of people and still do what I'm doing today. Because I believe in you and I trust in you and I surrender my life to you today. If I have any hardship or anything in my life, anything that I need to repent, please bring it to my attention. And let me come and bow down and truthfully give you everything in my life. Because without you I am nothing. Without you I am going nowhere. But straight back into the pits of hell where you rescued me. You brought me out of death. Gave me life. Each and every step I've taken, you have protected me, and I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Even when I knew that I wasn't following you or didn't even want to hear about you, I'm glad you sent your protection to be around me. And I appreciate and I love each and every part of you. And I'm thankful that you never gave up on me. And I'm thankful that you went to that cross. And you paid a price that I could never, ever repay to you. And you did it without wanting anything but me. Just me. Not what I could do for you. Not what I could bring you. You wanted just me. And the world didn't. You did. I wish, Lord, I wish I would have been able to find you. Well, I should say, Lord, I wish I would have listened and let you in my life a long time ago. But I'm thankful for the days you have given me. I know tomorrow's not certain and I don't look for tomorrow, but I look and not to be foolish. But I do this. I 
plan for today. See what you have and what you need me to do. Lord, I just love you and I praise you and I thank you. In your holy, glorious name. Amen. See, people, this ain't a show. I'm not just doing this to... bring out look at me it's truly how I am if I'm doing something wrong I want him to correct me I want him to fix me I want him to come and change me he can't change me unless I love him can't change me if I don't allow him access to my life. You have to let him into your life. You have to let him come and be a part of your life. And be over your life. Be through your life. And every step that you take, if he is not centered, then you're never going to be nowhere. You're going to be lost. You have to put Jesus above all things in your life, over your family. He has to be first. Jesus isn't first in our lives. We're safe. I forgot I left coffee in the machine. That would have been a bad day. You know, you know what the hardest part of seeing all these visions is trying to explain to you guys exactly what I see. So I just give it to you the best way I can. I give it to you the only way I can in the simple words that I can give it to it in. You know, but you got to look at it and go, what's really about to happen is crazy. You can have all the guns in the world. Like I said, you're not going to stop them. They're eventually going to get you. You can't stop the evil, people. It's evil's time. And that, as a Christian, makes me excited. Some of you are going to be tortured really bad. If you think they're not going to put you in a camp... You're solely mistaken. Because all they're going to do is show you the beginning of hell, what it's going to be like. You don't like rules. If you didn't like the pandemic we went through, the big C, COVID, they don't have to air it. I don't care. It is what it is. Not like the whole entire government. Not like China doesn't speak of it. Not like Russia doesn't speak of it. I care less. What do you want out of life? I'm 
sure. I'm sure if I walked up to you right now and said, do you want to go to hell? Most people would probably say no. I don't care how bad of a city you are. What I don't, what I don't understand is this. You don't want to go, but why are you living the life you're living in? Why are you not taking the signs? How many videos do you have to watch of these prophets and these messengers and all these people that are talking about the same thing? I find it amazing. I've been talking about this stuff for a long time and other people are just now starting to talk about this. So what does that tell you? Look how long God has been giving this warning. Now the darkness thing, I don't know. I don't, th I don't know if it's going to be three days of darkness and all that. I mean... We posted the stuff on there because, again, somebody commented on that. Well, how come the three days of darkness never happened? Good question. I questioned it, too. We put the information on there so you can watch the video just in case. But then when I went back and listened, I listened to years back. I, I think I traced it back. I think it was like two years ago or three years ago. Somebody spoke the same exact thing. Now, the one lady, I guess, she just narrates um, what someone else is saying. So you really can't ask her because she's just reading what someone else wrote. To interpret it, I guess, or whatever. I don't know. But I know by now, I, I think I would stop reading it because I went back and watched a few of those videos. And most of the stuff that that person talked about, it has never come true yet. God said he's exposing these people. Look at that Mandy. Look how many people come against me on that. And look at her today. The other gentleman. The family, family, family guy. And look what he's doing. Unbelievable people. His ministry, this, and asking for money for this and that. If God, you're doing God's work, just like I tell pastors when they were talking about financial stuff and this and tithing and all this, because tithing, because if you're doing God's work, God will provide. Why won't He not provide? I mean, seriously, let's think about it. God will provide. Man, I wish I could take a picture of these clouds. This is lately, man, I took this one picture and I haven't showed Darlene yet. I don't know if I can up, just upload a picture on the YouTube, but uh, man, if I could truly show you this picture and let you look at it and let you go, oh wow. And without even telling you what, what what's there, I mean, it's amazing. Like right now, there's all these thick clouds. I mean, they, they look like cotton. They're so thick. But off to my left is an opening. And I know it's hard for people to understand the things there, but I literally see people walking on top of these clouds in that opening. Whether it's angels, whether it's people being received into heaven, I don't know, but I literally can see it. You think I'm a whack job all you want. Most Christians do. I'm, I'm serious. You can find more disbelievers in church than you can out here on the streets. And that's what amazes me. I've studied the Bible for years. Yeah, have you? But you, you're the biggest hypocrite I've ever met then. Hell, Lucifer knows the Bible. He was there from the beginning of it. That is so cool. I mean, I wish you guys, even if I probably pulled off and filmed it, I don't know if you could see what I'm seeing. You probably could see the opening. I know you can see that, but I'm wondering if you would actually be able to see the people. I wonder how many times people really stop and pay attention to things and look and say, oh wow, look at that. Let me, let, let me pull off. No, because we're too busy 
glued to our phones. We're too busy. Oh, an email goes off, and we're going to hold these phones in our hands, and, and we're going to be distracted driving. And next thing you know, we're going to get a ticket, and then you're going to be upset and mad the rest, you know, for weeks because you got to pay a ticket because you disobeyed. Are you turned left into a, a, a on a parking lot that you weren't supposed to turn left into, or you turn left out of a thing that has an arrow going one right turn only. There's signs everywhere, but yet the cop's sitting there and he gives you a ticket for it, and you think the cop is wrong. Man, that is so cool. I'm telling you, people, it's, I can't even really stare at it because it, it's taking my focus right to it. That's crazy. I mean, crazy in a good way. My kind of crazy. My language of crazy. I've never seen the clouds look like this. This is the second day now I woke up to a darkness like this. The crazy thing is, it's beautiful. All the things I've seen over the, over the years, this the most beautiful thing I've ever seen and that I could go back to. And I'm 52. And this is the most beautiful thing that I've seen here on this earth. And I am blessed to be able to see this. It's amazing. But what I find even more amazing is the darkness creeping over the light. And that's what's happening. This darkness is going to take over the light because we're allowing it. It's already here, people. It's like that movie, The Mist. Don't go out in the mist. It's already here. We've already allowed it. place to pull off and I would definitely just video this. changes tomorrow. It's time to take back, people. God, God is ready to pour His oil out. I'm claiming back the things that were robbed. And I guarantee you some people are only going to get this part of the video because that's just the nature of it. I'm not going to give a lot on that yet because that the teaching is coming. The big bad bully is coming. How many of you are tired of listening to children get bullied in school and some, some adults get bullied in the workplace? But the Worst bully of all is on his way. Well, 
well. Coming up on Easter. Passover. Take time to really think about what that resurrection means. Because I'm going to do a video soon before Easter gets here. I wonder how many people are going to actually and how it's going to affect them. But give an update to the last email I got and there's a few more that I'm finally going to get to. Because they're probably going to go, well, how come you haven't answered my emails? I'm getting there. <laughs> um, this person asked, well, I don't know if I should wait on that one or not. I think I will. But you know, live today, change yesterday. Yesterday is dead and gone. Today is here, we're still here. So it's what you do with it. It's truly what you're going to do with it. You have a chance to change your life and live a peaceful life. Not saying we're not going to go through issues. That's not what the Bible says. But either way, God bless you.